Hell yeah, brother. Welcome to the podcast. Stop Crying Poser, greatest podcast known to man as voted by Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Lex Luger, Barry Windham, Sting, Sid Vicious, Paul Roma, Brian Pillman, Chris Benoit, Steve McMichael, Kurt Henning, Dean Malenko, and of course, Jeff Jarrett. Those guys love this podcast. They watch it every single Friday right here on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle right around 3 30 p.m for once in our lives we've actually started the podcast one minute early i don't know if this has ever happened before in history we have a little bit of an active chat room which surprises me because a few moments ago no one was talking i book boy i love rain mr broski jingle jangle jangle nop g tav I appreciate you guys for hanging out. We got Vorge number five. Not a lot of uh, fun things to talk about here on the podcast. I'm feeling really sleepy. I woke up. Here's what happened. I went to sleep at like four in the morning. Uh, I was playing with ants. (laughs) I don't know how to explain this. I started to watch Wolf of Wall Street. I got tired. I said, you know what? It's already super late. Four in the morning. I'll go to sleep. I go to sleep. And usually I expect to be woken up around 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. by my dog to go out to the bathroom. He doesn't wake me up. So then I like, I doze awake a little bit at like nine. I'm like, oh, the dog didn't wake me up. Cool, let's get to sleep in. Went back to sleep, slept all the way till about uh, 11. So I got a, a really, really good uninterrupted night's sleep. I start my day, I make some breakfast. I come over here on the computer. I'm chatting with everybody, ready to go, reading articles, laughing, playing Mario. And then uh, all my energy just erased right before we started this podcast right now. But we'll be okay because I have plenty of things to talk about. Let's first talk about the ants. Ants, A-N-T-S, little insects, little bugs that crawl around and make little houses and attack other bugs. Remember the video game Sim Ant? It's a simulated ant so you could know what it's like to be an ant. Well... Yesterday, I was uh, just hanging out in the backyard messing with my dog. I look down, I see a little pile of ants, a little ant hill. And I go, oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, it would be funny. I pulled out my phone, I started filming it. Then I said, you know what? I could live stream this. So I get my other phone set up and updated, and I get it with all the software. I set it down on a little tripod. I zoom in really close. These ants are tiny, tiny, tiny ants. I zoom in, I get it on a little tripod I made. I put a little cup of water next to it and then i went live and i just called it ant hot tub stream so it's an ant sitting next to a little a little bottle cap of water then i put some sugar down right when i put the sugar down the ants started picking up the sugar bringing it in through the hole grab the sugar bring it in the hole i was like fuck it dude let's make this really crazy i grabbed a french fry set a french fry next to it, grabbed a piece of dog food, set the dog food next to it, and then naturally, you guys know where the story's going, I filmed it for 14 straight hours. <laughs> I just turned on, I turned on my stream, hit record, I put a light out there so it could go on all night, there's a light bulb, and I, I got an extension cord, and I, I plugged it in so the phone wouldn't die, And we had a 14-hour stream of just ants crawling around. And I got maybe 10 follows out of it. And this morning, when I watched the VOD, I don't know why I'm so optimistic. I was like, dude, what if I go to sleep and I wake up and I've gained like 5,000 followers? You know, just people that love ants. Or maybe people look at this and like ironically follow and, and they realize that I'm actually like funny or something. But that's not the case. It's mostly people who came into my chat room, wrote a question mark, and then left. They're like, what is this, ants? Okay, bye. (laughs) That's mostly what it was. But I'm, I get so optimistic sometimes. I'm like, well, no one else is filming ants right now. Like that, that could be like my ticket to the top. Just film a pile of ants in my backyard. I was like, yeah, dude, I just gotta sign up for the username ant lifestyle. And then just have that phone always out there. I was thinking of plans of how to like block it off so the dog can't get to it. Like put a little uh, like gate around this one anthill. And then I woke up today and I said, well, that was fucking stupid. 
No one cares about ants. But I looked at like the outdoors section of Twitch, which has barely any viewers. One of the channels was just called Stop Sign. And it was just a live stream of a stop sign. And it's like, who's going to stop at the stop sign? Who's going to go through the stop sign? I don't know. Some people will stop. Some people will run the stop sign. And that's the whole the whole chat room. And in my opinion, ants are way more entertaining than a stop sign. Also, I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was funny that I named it Ant Hot Tub Stream. Like, there was a, there was a little the hot tub was there. They had food. And then I named it, like, snacks. Like, Eating snacks and, and sipping on drinks at the hot tub ant party. I changed the name a couple times. And I have this uh this like disco light ball that I took out there, but the ants didn't like that at all. And it lights up my whole backyard, so then my neighbors would think I'm having a weird <laughs> party by myself, the quietest party ever. I didn't want them to be woken up by bright fucking multicolored lights on the side of my house and going over their wall onto their tree. So that's <laughs> So that's the ant situation. Uh, maybe we'll we'll revisit that another day. Maybe tonight. Maybe tonight I'll just when I go out to hang out with my friends and drink some beers. Maybe I'll turn on the old ant stream. I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the day there was a stream called Fish Plays Pokemon. Fish Plays Pokemon. Okay, that's that seems odd. How can uh how can that be something very popular? Oh, it was very popular and it, it made. A nice chunk of change somehow I don't know why they ever stopped it so these programmers got the game Pokemon running and uh, they got like an emulated version of Pokemon and then they had a fish tank a video of a fish tank and there was the fish tank had like nine quadrants you know so if the fish was at if the fish went to the top left of the fish tank it would be like press a if the fish went to the right side of the fish tank it'd be like press B if the fish went to the bottom left square, it'd be like left. Every every part of the fish tank, if the fish was there, it would coincide with hitting a button on the Game Boy. So this fish played Pokemon for fucking, you know, a thousand straight hours before before even like getting out of the, the opening screen. <laughs> Cause you know, when you start the game, you have to hit you have to hit start game. Then you have to hit uh, name your character and shit like that. So yeah, thousands of hours go by and this fucking fish is playing Pokemon. And I thought that was uh, kind of interesting and that's my motivation for ant lifestyle. <laughs> May you never know. Maybe one day somebody will be like, you know what, dude? This guy is friendly to the environment. I'm a millionaire. Here, ant lifestyle, here's $40,000. Yeah, that's that's what my life has become. Just wishing and praying that money just falls into my lap. Probably won't happen, though. Speaking of my life, the other day I came home uh, and my house smelled like shit. And I said, wow, this house smells like shit. Ugh. So I grab out the carpet cleaner. I clean the carpet with the water jets to clean the carpet. Then I vacuum it and I do that twice. And I go, oh, that's a little better. Go to sleep, wake up again. I go, damn, this house smells like shit. What is going on, man? Then I'm looking around, like trying to clean up. I'm like, yeah, fuck, this house just smells, dude. The dog took a shit the other day. I cleaned up the dog shit. I cleaned up the dog shit. Cleaned it up. Fucking washed the carpet twice. Vacuumed. Why does this house still smell like shit? And I'm like, man, maybe the... Maybe the dog doo-doo sunk really deep into the carpet. So anyways, the dog runs out of water. I go over to the water bowl, and behind this little box is all the dog shit that I cleaned up and I put into a plastic bag, and I just left it. I cleaned up the dog shit, put it in a plastic bag, and then just left it out. Just left it out in the open to stink up the fucking house for multiple days. So I'm just breathing feces air. For, for multiple days, for two straight days. Like, what is going on here? So, go back in time. I'm like, okay, I came home. I was drunk. I drunkenly cleaned up all the dog shit. And I guess, uh, I guess instead of throwing it away outside, I threw it away, like, inside. And then 
It just uh, right behind that box was the dog shit. You know what, dude? The story I've, I've said too much. All right, I just I just left dog shit in my house and just just, just left it there to enjoy. This is probably going to be a short podcast, guys. We don't have much in the news. We don't have much going on. I uh, tried the shack pizza. <laughs> I think it's called the shackaroni or something. It's called the shack pizza, whatever, from Papa John's. I've been going to Domino's, and the Domino's by me is run by idiots. I went to Pizza Hut a couple times. They mess it up. They just fuck everything up. Domino's and Pizza Hut in my neighborhood are just terrible, right? I live in, like, a ghetto area. The people that go to work, I think they just don't want to be there, which is fine. I understand it. I wouldn't want to be there either. So I stopped going there. I said, you know what? I got to try a new pizza place because I'm getting tired of this fucking pizza. So I say, okay, Papa John's. I go to papajohns.org. No, I'm kidding. I go to the Papa John's website. I see Shaq fucking smiling at me all sweaty. And I'm like, uh, okay, Shaq pizza. Okay, it's only fucking 14 bucks. And it's humongous. Gigantic fucking pizza, which matches uh, Shaq. Also, I thought Shaq was a great spokesperson. Because the last guy, Papa John famously departed his uh, brand in a wave of sweat. Just a sweaty bitch. And Shaq is also famously always fucking sweating. So I was excited that they didn't they didn't leave the sweating part of their branding behind. And the pizza was pretty good. I got it with uh, pepperoni. It comes with pepperoni. And then I added uh, sausage for an extra like dollar. And then I had a little mini can, a little like tiny can of olives. I put olives on there. I love olives. A lot of people don't like them. I think they also complement the way a pizza looks. You know, now you have all these little black spots everywhere. It looks more like harmonious. (laughs) The pizza now looks harmonious. So I ate that. It was cool. Got some new uh, hot sauces. Tried them out. They're pretty good. Pizza, man. Everyone loves pizza. But I was thinking to myself, pizza's not like, everyone eats this food, but I've never had a life-changing pizza. I've had some life-changing steaks. I've had some life-changing ramens, just all around, just like really good dishes. I had some life-changing like rosemary chicken one day from uh, Hash House. And I was like, wow, this butter sauce is amazing. It's like lemon lemon buttery sauce was amazing and i've had a lot of foods that have like just changed my life and i i remember all those foods i say you know what i'll never have a steak this good again or i'll never have this butter this buttery sauce on this rosemary chicken ever again things like that ramen same way like oh my god the the pork in this is is amazing i've never had that with pizza though i've never had a pizza where i was like wow this is fucking so good And that leads me to believe that maybe pizza is just a wildly overhyped thing in the world. Everyone thinks pizza is the greatest food, yet, you know, people just eat it cold and shitty. You even have some sicko sociopaths out there who are putting hot fruit on their pizza. Ugh, hot fruit. Yeah, see, that's that's what they're into, man. Hot fruits on their fucking pizza. Disgusting. What else happened this week? Skate park got remodeled uh, nearby. I told you guys last week that I was excited to skateboard and film this week because there was three spots I wanted to to check out, three spots, and I wanted to go to a new skate park that had been remodeled. I wanted to do a whole like, check out this obstacle, then do a trick, look at this obstacle, then do a trick, oh, look at this obstacle, oh, I think they did a good job, do a trick. And just explain the whole park and make uh, make a kind of fun little vlog out of it. So I get to the skate park and I already noticed that it's going to be terrible because there's a million fucking scooter riders and little kids there. The skate park is smack in the middle of a neighborhood. It's it's not on a main road. It's like it's like in the middle of a neighborhood, like a little community area. And I get there, all the ramps are metal. So picture yourself trying to do a vlog like you got the camera. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, I'm Steve, and we're at this skate park. They remodeled it. It used to be called this, and then you hear a giant clang. And that was just a person dropping in. 
Like in the middle of you trying to talk, all you hear is just bling, just sheet metal slamming on the ground. So any hope of doing something involving talking to a camera is impossible at that park. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll just warm up and I'll try to do some skating. Then I realized the way the skate park is shaped, every obstacle is facing each other. So everyone is pretty much constantly in each other's way. It was a complete disaster. All we ended up doing was skating this bank that goes back and forth. So I go up a ramp, do a trick, roll down the ramp. I uh, came out with a miraculous three, three whole tricks got done, uh, depressingly. And my camera got hit. My camera was on the other side of a ramp, outside of the park, sitting in the dirt. So the park is so small and crowded and smushed together that a skateboard flew off of an obstacle over the curb and into my camera. Just, uh, my camera's become a magnet over the years for skateboards and it doesn't really matter. I know that, I know the skateboard's gonna get hit is, or sorry, I know the camera's gonna get hit as long as the skateboard doesn't hit it negligently. So let me tell you a negligent story that I've told before. One day, uh, Tex decides he wants to do frontside flip 5-0 on this ramp into a, a ledge. Granted, Tex hasn't done a 5-0 in six years. He hasn't done a frontside flip since Jesus existed. And he just believes to himself, yep, even though I can't frontside flip, nor can I 5-0, I think I'll add these two tricks together and, uh, I think I'll do it right next to the camera. And of course, he doesn't even come remotely close. Slams my camera, breaks my lens. And that's just one of a million stories. I had one story, dude. You would not, you honestly would not believe this if I explained it to you. I'll try to make it happen with this chapstick. So I land a trick, I fall on a trick, and my skateboard rolls away. It rolls towards my camera, which is sitting on a tripod. It's rolling towards the camera, sitting on a tripod. It hits the tripod, boom. Knocks the camera over. The camera then lands on the skateboard. It's now become a taxi. The skateboard is now riding my camera on top of it as I'm still, you know, like several feet away across the skate park. I'm watching my camera roll away from me on the skateboard. So you think, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. Oh no, it was bad because next to it is a seven foot bowl that the skateboard makes a U-turn, goes right off the bowl and drops straight to the flat part of the bowl. Now let me fucking re-explain that in a way you guys can understand. The motherfucking skateboard flies to the camera, hits the camera, taxis the camera to imminent suicide. If you guys picture that, it's it seems like the most unlikely thing. We have kids out there doing like bottle flips off of buildings. You know, people making basketball shots from three miles away, but nothing in the history of unlikeliness has ever been so, oh, so unfortunate as when my skateboard picked up my camera, ran away, and jumped off of a fucking bowl, landed flat on the bottom. And it would have been amazing if this would have been filmed in some way, but it wasn't because the camera was just, was facing up so you can't tell what's happening it was it was terrible but it's one of those things where i'm just like yep i knew it i knew it that something bad was gonna happen and of course it did so the skate park got remodeled and my plans for this week kind of got ruined in multiple ways i was really bummed out this week and i don't mean to like be a bitch and just cry about everything that that always happens but i was actually like actually bummed out this week and uh it was a collection of multiple things all happening at once just just like a couple of unfortunate events that really get you thinking in your head and bum you out so i figure i'll share them with you guys maybe it'll make me feel a little better i've always complained about this pet peeve of mine we've, we've even done it here on the podcast and I think we've done it recently. When someone comes to Las Vegas, who I used to hang out with or who I skate with, a skater, or even like an acquaintance, or even like a sales rep 
from a previous life or a friend of a friend that I met. They come to Las Vegas. I expect them to say, hey, what's up, man? I'm in Vegas for a few days. Would love to grab a drink or grab lunch. And I go, okay, cool. Let's grab a drink or grab lunch. A lot of people still do that with me. If I go to San Diego, I have, you know, my two or three people I want to hit up. If I'm in LA, you know, I have my people I want to reach out to. Of course, Gonzo and some other friends. Even, even when I drive across town in where Rydog lives at, if I go to Larry's house, I say, hey, Rydog, I'm, I'm on your side of town. You want to grab a beer or come, come sit down with, with my friend and whatever we're doing, watch TV or watch sports. Or if I'm at Rydog, I say, hey, Larry, I'm, I'm never on this side of town, man, but I'm hitting you up just in case you're, you're free today. Let's go fucking grab a drink or, or come watch sports. And uh, I've always been the type of person that does that. And people always used to do that with me too. People, YouTubers always used to do that. And now they don't. And it's been person after person after person after person. And, it, and it's maybe, maybe they're busy, of course. You know what? Like the world's not about me. Not everyone has to fucking stop and, and, and has to say hi to me, you know? But it leads me to believe like, why, why am I the one that wants to say hi to everybody, but nobody wants to say hi to me? Am I a douchebag? Am I a piece of shit? Does it have to do with my YouTube channel not being successful? Or pe were people only friends with me before because I had a successful YouTube? Now that I have a less successful YouTube, are they not friends with me? All these thoughts can be like weirdly depressing, you know, like, uh, like all those thoughts. Do these, do these people think I'm a dick now? I don't think I'm a dick. So that's, that's annoying. Uh, do these people not want to talk to me because my YouTube's whack? Okay, well, that's kind of, that's depressing because I thought everyone was my real friend. Even like other things like that, you know, I'm just like, oh, okay, well, maybe they only liked me from before. You know, these people, you, you put them on camera and they say, oh yeah, that dude's cool as fuck, man. That's, that dude's my homie, you know, no matter who it is. And it's, it's not like, it's not just one person. We're not just going to name one name. It's a whole lot of people. And, uh, so I'm dealing with that on like, you know, Sunday, Monday, then, uh, Tuesday rolls around. I look, I look at these NHL tickets. I say, damn, I could go to a golden Knights game for like $24. Usually it's like 70 bucks. It's a preseason game. So I say, fuck man, let's go. I hit up a couple people. The first people to respond. So, okay, let me explain it like this. I need, uh, I need to buy two tickets. Otherwise I don't get the discount. I can't buy three tickets and I can't buy one ticket. I have to buy two tickets to get the discount. So the first people that respond, it's like girl Ryan. She's like, yeah, me and Zach would love to come. And I'm like, well, then, then, you and, then you and him would buy two tickets and you guys could go. I need just one person to go. And then uh, this chick Dottie hit me up. Me and Nick are down to go. And I'm like, okay. Uh, again, like th then you guys are good. You guys can you qualify for these tickets. I, I'm not able to go. I hit up this dude Tommy. Tommy says, let's go. Then he finds out that he's busy. Then I put a screenshot in the Discord. I hit up 12 people. 12 people and they were all just too busy. And that's... That's okay, people have lives, people have jobs. But on the on the heels of me being bummed out about the people coming to Vegas not saying hi thing, then I get this thing where I'm like, I just hit up tw 12 people plus the other four for a, a great deal on a really fun event and nobody's down to go. And I know that's that's not saying anything about me, that's more saying things about my friends being busy. But all of that happening together, I was just like, fuck. That shit's fucking, like, everything's hitting me all at once. I, I know I, I went home the next day, and I started editing Ninja Review, and I'm just like, dude, what the fuck, man? And, you know, eventually you get over it. You know, you eat some junk food, and you fucking drink a beer, and then you, you sleep on it, and then you're fine. But it was a really bummer of a week, and I still fucking, I still kind of feel like a little a little bit of this this shit. And then, of course, you get this thing that happens. The very next day, more people get like start talking to you like, hey, whoa, dude, you should have invited me. You should have invited me to that thing. And I'm like, I mean, it was public on Facebook for you know, 24 hours. Uh, there was plenty of time. I should I should have invited you. Oh, and of course there was one chick who said I'd love to go, but she wanted me to pay for everything. <laughs> like, so, this, so that's even more annoying. The one person who wanted to go was just like a, a, a like a a moocher. I'm like, well, like that's that's how important I am to the world. Uh, unless it's free, 
No one's down to hang out with me, and unless my YouTube's popular, nobody wants to hang out. So it was, uh, it's like a, like a difficult week. But I know none of that's true. I know I'm awesome. I know you know you guys all think I'm cool. But sometimes when you're when you're when you're facing that that hurdle, it's it kind of sucks. But life goes on. We'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of fucking annoying things, on. My other channel, I uploaded a video of Andy getting hit with a ball. And I'm not going to explain exactly what that means, but if you saw the channel, you saw what it was. Uh, it's just I, I took a clip from Andy's and I looped it hundreds of times. So it's just Andy getting hit with a ball for 10 straight minutes hundreds of times. Super lazy video, nothing special about this video. Except that it's like, it's really funny and it's, it's a, like a prank. Like, you watch this video, you send it to one of your friends, they laugh for five seconds. Then they turn it off, you know, it's just, just like a gag video, kind of like these, they used to call it YouTube poop, where it's just, you take the funny part of a movie, you loop it a thousand times, and it's just the funny part of a movie replaying over and over and over again. If you're high as fuck off some weed, you're gonna, you're gonna die laughing, or mushrooms, you're just gonna die laughing. It's kind of a pointless video, but anyways, uh, the point is, I uploaded it, and then I looked at the views a few minutes later. It had three views. And one of those views was me. And it already had a thumbs down. Which means someone subscribed to my new channel just so that they could be the first person to watch a video and thumbs it down. Which obviously doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. But again, it makes me rethink society. Why are you burning so many calories trying to knock what I'm doing when you could just not watch the video and never subscribe to me? You know what I mean? Like, it, this video's been up for three minutes. It's a 10-minute video. I know you didn't watch the video. You just clicked it and hit thumbs down and then went on with your day. And it still baffles me as to how many calories people will burn just to be a dick. Like, uh, <laughs> I just think it's weird. Andy thumbed it down. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. So again, yeah, maybe I'm just in a pouty mood. Maybe I'm just in this, like, uh, this, like, ah, uh, poor me kind of mood. But fucking all this bullshit's happening this week. And I fucking upload the video today. And I get one of the first, <laughs> the first three people, one of the first two people to view it. Thumbs it down. Granted, it is a thumbs downable video. <laughs> Granted, it is like a really low effort video that's not <laughs> not that interesting. But you guys should check it out if you want to watch it. it. It makes me laugh. If I was high as fuck or, or if I took a little bit of mushrooms, I would shit my pants laughing at this fucking video. In fact, stay tuned if you're watching this live. We're going to watch it uh, after this podcast. The podcast probably is going to be over in about 10 minutes too. So that happened, and uh, that's that's really what's what's been going on this whole week. Not not one of my finest weeks ever, but you you know what you know what, dudes. Let me tell you this. I don't fucking care about these YouTube people anymore. You know, like let's let you know, like if, if that's how we're gonna play the game, then that's cool. Okay, let's let's make a plan to move forward. Quit caring so much about about this shit and worry about your own shit. Okay, cool. Step one. Step two. There's another Golden Knights game on Thursday. I'm going to that fucking game, whether I got to go alone. I'll buy two fucking tickets, and I'll bring a fucking homeless man if I have to. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I will see this fucking game on Thursday, no fucking matter what. And this, these are my, these are my little goals to get my head in the right direction, because we can't just sit here and be sad all fucking day. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can. We certainly can, but we're going to try not to. And uh, I want to get back to being productive, man. I got to clean my house a little bit. Clean my backyard last week. Backyard was looking good. We're out here filming ants. We have a lot of things to be happy about. So let's try not to... I say let's when I'm really just talking to myself. Let's try to focus on the, the positive things. Also, this week, um, it just seems like everyone's fucking dying, man. A lot of my friends, my Northtown friends, uh, and all my friends that do do music, they lost a friend this week. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Grace Kabama, Jesse Jean Bart's homie, died this week. Uh, one of my homies went missing, stole a dog and went missing. 
It's all over the news. Uh, I wouldn't call him my homie, like an acquaintance, somebody I knew. Like I saw this last time I see this guy was at the bar. I roll and I was like, hey, I don't know you come to this bar. And he's like, I just got off work. And I'm like, cool, man. He's like, I got a kid now. And I'm like, cool, man. Life seems like it's going good for you. Later, dude. Leave, whatever. A year later, this fool's fucking on the run. Police got a, a fucking the thing out for his, to, to find him. His car's fucking, the AP, how do you say? AB, APV, APB? What the fuck is that thing called where they have an alert out on you to fucking catch you if they find you? This fool stole a dog and he's out missing. I'm like, man, we got people dying. Our pets' heads are falling off. We got this fucking fool, Dylan, stealing dogs going missing. And people are in Vegas not hitting me up, man. What the fuck else could go wrong? So, of course, I broke the fuck out of a coffee table, which is my new hobby. Twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle if you want to see people break coffee tables. I'm making a killing off these coffee tables, people. I, uh... I've officially reached that point where Twitch makes more money than YouTube solely because of coffee tables. And hopefully my friend Nick will take me to get another coffee table. I found a life hack. Uh, shout out to Barrel Full of Games. He told me that there's a savers in uh, the nicer part of town, but it's not too far from me. It's only maybe like five miles away. Go up there. That's where all the best shit is. So I'm going to go to that savers, buy every coffee table they got, and it's probably going to be much nicer coffee tables, more coffee tables, and I might get some kitchen appliances because I realized secondhand appliances literally are like 10% of the cost. Like if I wanted a deep fryer or a pressure cooker, you go to Walmart, you know, you might pay 100 bucks at these fucking secondhand stores, 15 bucks. Dude, fuck yeah. That's my new shit. Also, I need someone, I need, I need help. I want to buy like a suit. And Doug Desatels was the first person to give me this great advice. He said, go to the thrift store and buy fucking all the suit things you need, then get them tailored. And I thought to myself, I was like, I don't want some fucking old ass dingy fucking dude's fucking suit. Then I thought to myself, you know what, motherfucker? There's probably suits in there that have only been worn twice and then the fucking person died or got fat, and now they give them away to, to to the thrift store. Why am I bitching about wearing something that's already been worn before? Do you guys see how gross I am, like on a daily basis? I'm like, I'd be like eating expired food and shit, but suddenly I won't wear somebody else's shirt. Oh no, hell no. I'm getting over that shit immediately. I'm gonna find a tailor. I'm gonna figure out exactly what I need to know. And bro, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, it's winter coming up, so it's gonna be cold. I'm gonna come out with a suit, jacket, some fucking snakeskin boots. I'm gonna be looking good. I'm gonna get one of those watches that that's on a chain where I have to, I have to open it up like this. It opens like this. Yeah. Fucking, I don't, whatever that shit is. I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna have one of the one, I'm gonna wear my glasses with just one, one monocle. <laughs> what else is, I'm gonna wear a top hat like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> I'm ready, dude. I'm ready for this thrift store shit. I also found out that since I've been buying so many coffee tables, I get like discounts now. I got like a rewards card. Man. I got a lot I got a lot of things to smile about. A lot of things to be happy about. So try not to be so fucking down in the dumps about about this bullshit. So, uh October 1 happened also. Shout out to all the I don't know moment of silence for people who are dead. It's big news, you know, and it's a super terrible tragedy And it's all over the news. I don't really know how to like acknowledge it I don't know what's the respectful way to acknowledge it here on the podcast But four years ago like 56 people were murdered in Las Vegas While I was asleep I was eating a uh, pepperoni hamburger and then I got really drunk and I went home and went to sleep and when I woke up, my phone was going crazy. Everybody was like, oh, mass shooting in Vegas. Are you okay? All my friends were like fucking, a lot of my friends work on this trip. They're like traumatized and uh, super stressful time. I did find out today that there was like a $10 million settlement or, or eight, eight million, ten million million, $10 million settlement for all those people. So hopefully they got paid. But uh, also it was, you know, it really fucking bothers me. There's a lot of people out there still that think that this was like a false flag or like fake operation. There's multiple gunmen and some people think that there was a helicopter shooting at people. And that those conversations really annoy me because it's not 
that far fetched. I remember there's there was a chick that used to be a bartender, and she's like, she's like, yeah, you, you think it's possible for a human being to break a casino window with a hammer? And I'm just like, yes. Yes, I think it's possible to break a window with a hammer. Yes, I do. And she's like, there's no way, man. Those are made to like withstand wind storms and shit. And I'm like, she's also one of those like proud independent women. Like, like she like women can do anything kind of girls like feminism and, and shit like that. So I said, okay, so if I gave you a hammer, do you think you could break it or are you too weak? And then she fucking imploded. I exploded her brain. Her brain exploded because I I put her in between either I'm a weak woman or windows are breakable and her brain just couldn't couldn't comprehend just just short she just like she buzzed and like smoke came out and she said she just powered down had no idea what to do she's like uh either my conspiracy theory is fucking stupid or I'm a weak fucking shitty woman I don't know how to respond <laughs> must refuel <laughs> I hate the fucking conspiracy people man. I, like I'm down with conspiracies and I'm down with you know like all this shit but I don't think it's that far-fetched in this situation that a guy shot a bunch of people and then killed himself and there's so many people looking for like a lot of people they don't ask a question they tell you the answer you know what I mean? they go well you know there was no bullet shells you know that right and then you go well there's bullet shells in every single photo they go oh I didn't I didn't know there were photos and you go, well, that's because you're dumb as fuck and you just made up a fact. You know what I mean? Like, I've had to deal with that conversation multiple times. One person's like, like, you can see flashing from one of the bottom floors. I said, yeah, that's a strobe light. And they go, that's not a strobe light, man. That's a gun. And I go, well, here's a video from years earlier taken from a taxi dash cam of the same strobe light. And here's a video taken inside the building of the strobe light. And they're like, where do these videos come from? And I'm like, Oh, they're everywhere. You just just read the comments. Whenever you see a conspiracy, just read the first four comments, and then usually the first four are disproving whatever the fuck you're trying to figure out. Can you believe how somebody said, I didn't know there were pictures? I didn't know that people take pictures of crime scenes. Yes. <laughs> you want to know why? Because you make up the world you live in. You just make it up. I just think, what the fuck? I didn't, I didn't know I had to pay for this these groceries. Yeah, you have to pay for them. I didn't know that. <laughs> My God people dude fucking people speaking of fucking people man john bones jones has been arrested in las vegas for the what 15th time this guy he uh <laughs> how do you explain this on the same night i'm not sure exactly how these details go something along the lines of this on the same night that he gave a speech about being put in the hall of fame where he jokes about not doing illegal things anymore. Less than 12 hours later, he uh, he assaults he assaults his fiance. Well, okay, I don't I don't know how to how to say this. It's he just does he does the most John Jones shit ever. He uh, after his little speech about being in the Hall of Fame or something, goes to the strip club, leaves his wife and kids in the hotel, comes home at 4 a.m. He comes home at 4 a.m. to the hotel, assaults his wife uh, to the point where she was bleeding. So we don't know much details. Gets arrested, headbutts the police car, causing a huge dent, which he, he got charged for that too. Uh, tells the cops that he can beat them up. Tells the cops he can break through the handcuffs. Starts crying, then starts cooperating, and starts fighting again. The, the, the fiancé is afraid to press charges, <laughs> like... And all this is happening in front of, like, one of his kids. And let me remind you, this is after... <laughs> this is after, the, in the past years, let's just go off the top of my head, things that he's been in trouble for. The cocaine possession, uh, the DUI, the hit and run where he hit a pregnant woman and then ran from the scene. Uh, the multiple... The, the time he got caught with a, shooting a gun out of his car and then got caught with the gun. Uh... The times he's been, he's documented hiding from drug tests from the UFC, the USADA drug test, where he was hiding under like a stage when they came to drug test him and they pretended he wasn't there. Uh, also, multiple drug tests for performance enhancing drugs where he pretended that he was taking dick pills and the dick pills 
somehow had steroids in them. Uh, he, he's, he's pissed dirty like three times in the UFC. Um, and somehow, somehow he avoids getting suspended. He's never been in trouble. <laughs> this was a topic of last weekend because Nick Diaz fought. Nick Diaz got caught smoking weed three times. He was banned from the sport for five years because he got caught smoking weed three times. John Jones just did all of the above and they put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on, but he did actually get booked into the actual jail. He's out now, his court date's later in the month. We'll figure that out later. Uh, I have no idea what. Also, he lost three fights and some weird, some weird coincidence with the judges caused him to win those three fights. He lost a fight to Gustafsson, he lost to uh, Reyes, and he lost to Tiago Santos, all of which had very strange scorecards, weird conspiracies trying to keep this guy from losing. I don't understand what it is. I think it's just that he's a valuable fighter. Um, and people, people love to hate on him. I'm one of those people. I love to hate on him. But people also love to defend the fuck out of this guy, and I don't get it. I got a friend who's from Albuquerque who said he's done cocaine with this guy what a coincidence that he gets caught with cocaine multiple times and uh i imagine okay this is this now this is me speculating okay i imagine if you're at the strip club at 5 a.m and you're not sleepy and you're down to fucking fight with cops and beat up a chick and then headbutt a police car and then start crying i'm gonna lean towards either some type of like hallucinogen or you're, you're back on the old cocaine again so, uh, <laughs> John Jones is just being himself, man, but he got arrested and at least they didn't let him slide. At least they did the cops. At least the cops weren't like, Hey, I know you just beat up a woman, but can I take a picture? Okay. Have a good day. Uh, be on your way. You're free to go. I'm glad that didn't happen. You know what? I'm really just a hater. I'm just a hater. And if you love this guy, then feel free to leave a comment below when this podcast comes out on YouTube. If you missed the beginning of the podcast, this podcast rerun, this podcast comes out on Sunday, uh, early in the morning, like 7 a.m. Pacific time on Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube. That's all I got for the podcast. I didn't think we'd make it to the 45 minute mark, but my rambling and rambling about John Jones and rambling about, oh, poor me, poor me, has, uh, has, has served me well yet again so i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast let me know your thoughts on the shack pizza let me know your thoughts on me cleaning up dog shit let me know your thoughts on ants are they good animals are they not also do you guys think that i'm uh i'm being a bitch about the the whole like uh people not saying hi to me shit and you know now when i say it out loud i feel like i'm being a punk but but when I'm just in my feelings being quiet, it, it seems more real. So who knows, man? Let me know your thoughts on John Jones. And uh, check out my other channel where you can watch uh, Andy get hit in the face with a ball. I hope you guys have a great weekend, a nice, safe weekend. Also, I have a really funny sound clip that I've been saving for the end of the podcast. So don't go anywhere. Uh, that's all I have to say to you guys. Shout out to... Guy Jizz for his donation of $10. He writes, yee! I appreciate you guys supporting the podcast. Guy Jizz supports the podcast every single Friday here when we do it live. It's always appreciated. Guy Jizz is also a streamer. So if you want to watch some new guys streaming, he streams video games, and he also streams workouts. He also streams conspiracy theories, motherfucker. So go check him out if you want to. I appreciate the support. Shout out to Guy Jizz. Yaki Tasha. Ron, stop it. I book boy. Ifu the same and of course Gaijus and everybody else in here who's lurking you guys have a great weekend don't drink too much but don't drink too little bye I pull out the Glock, put it on his forehead, and spill his brains all over the concrete. <laughs>